So here we're going to see probably the kind of most challenging gas-based problem you might see in a course like uh, TRU 1523, to be quite honest. Might be a little too hard for an exam, but don't quote me on that kind of thing. But it really emphasizes all the little bits and pieces of information that have comprised the entire understanding of the ideal gas law to this point. Here we're talking about a reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas. Given a balanced equation there, two aluminum solid plus six HCl aqueous gives us two aluminum chloride in the aqueous solution plus three hydrogen gas. And so we've got a balanced equation. We can connect any of these chemicals together as long as we have an amount in moles for one of them. And we see we're getting information about hydrogen. 35.5 milliliters of hydrogen is collected over water at 26 degrees Celsius and a barometric pressure of 755 millimeters of mercury. How many moles of HCl must have been consumed in this reaction? So we want to know something about HCl, but all the information we have is for hydrogen. We have to use the stoichiometry of the balanced equation, which means we're going to have to figure out the number of moles of hydrogen to make that connection. But we see we've got pressures and volumes. We've got a volume. Whoops. Let's try that again. We have a volume of 35.5 milliliters. But hey, let's convert that to liters because that's probably going to be more useful in terms of the gas constants I got up here anyway. We have also a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, but of course we need that in Kelvin. That's 299 Kelvin. And a barometric pressure, and here's where we have to be careful, a barometric pressure of 755 millimeters of mercury. You notice that isn't the actual pressure of hydrogen gas. It's the barometric pressure. Again, in this kind of situation, we might have had our chemical reaction happening here, and then we would connect this to a manometer kind of situation where we block things off, and we essentially measure the pressure of the gas coming off. And so what we have to account for, though, is this liquid in here because we're collecting over water is not mercury, it's water. And water has a nasty habit of vaporizing a little bit on us. Some of those molecules go into the gas phase. How many? Well, at a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, enough to create a pressure, a gas pressure, because we've created a mixture of gases. We've essentially got the hydrogen gas we made in the reaction, and now we've got this water just because we're collecting it over the liquid. So the actual pressure of hydrogen is going to be the barometric pressure minus the partial pressure of water that's doing some of the volume that we see. But since we're only interested in the hydrogen gas from the reaction, that water had nothing to do with the reaction. We've got to get it out of the way. 755 millimeters of mercury. From that, we are going to subtract are 25.2 millimeters of mercury. And that's going to give us something like 729.8 millimeters of mercury. And now we have a pressure. Let's call it 730, just keep safe figs, kind of where they should be. Okay, so now we've got that. PV equals NRT. N equals PV over RT. You notice how we do this rearrangement a lot because we're often wanting to calculate a number of moles. So pressure, 730 millimeters of mercury, which I could convert by saying one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury, and that lets me use a gas constant with atmospheres in it. Our volume we've seen was ooh, 0.0355 liters. this, we are going to divide by 0.0831, no, 0.8206, there, caught myself, liter atmosphere sphere per Kelvin per mole. And that temperature now, 299 Kelvin. So when I do this problem, 
do some math. 730 divided by 760 times 10355 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 299 and I am getting 1.39 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Certainly makes sense, very small volume, close to standard temperature and pressure, gotta be less than one mole. Seems reasonable. All right, now that we know that number of moles, well that's of course the number of moles of H2. The number of moles of HCl, as we see in our balanced equation, is gonna be connected to our number of moles of H2 in that we consume six HCl for every 3H2 we make. So in other words, we are going to have 3H2, uh, sorry, 6 uh, HCl divided by 3 H2s. That gives us essentially the ratio. We're going to see it's twice the number of hydrogen molecules, which will be twice 1.39 times 10 to the minus 3 moles, which will be 2.78 times 10 to the minus 3 moles.